Good afternoon. I'm Grendelyn Morton, and this is Live at Five, where every local story starts here. Some of the top headlines we're working on today, some strong storms, of course, moved through the area last night, causing property damage and power loss. We've got all the details, including who to call if you have damage. Plus, the Jeep community tried to break a Guinness World Record over the weekend. We've got the details on that, too. All of this here today, Live at Five. But now in our WBON TV Channel 9 big story of the day. Last night, strong heavy rain and hail caused many families in Madison County to have to seek shelter as a powerful storm system made its way through the area. The Madison County Emergency Management Agency estimated thousands of customers were without power for some time throughout the night while many still remain without power today. There were lots of trees knocked over, power lines were torn down, and some even had outdoor items blown away or destroyed. The National Weather Service is currently in the area surveying the damage and trying to confirm if there indeed was a tornado that touched down last night as reports were coming in around 10:30 and 11 that one was spotted near Four Mile Road. Michael Watkins was out and about today surveying some of those areas nearby the station that were affected and provided some of the details on what he saw while he was out today. Of all the areas that were hit last night, the entrance to the Richmond Mall was just one of those. And this local fireworks stand known as Southern Boom lost around forty to $50,000 worth of product. I spoke to the owner while I was out today. He is out of Winchester, and while he didn't want to go on camera, he detailed the scary situation he and his family found themselves in, stating that once the sirens went off, he sent his wife and his son to the vehicle while he tried to move as much product to the middle of their tent as he could. His family saw that he was struggling to do that, rushed back in to help him, but as they did, the tent collapsed and the water and wind destroyed almost half of their inventory. While I was there, there were people setting up a new tent for them, and he said they were having more product delivered today. Madison Hills Christian Church suffered some extensive damage as well. This morning, members of the church went over to assess the damage done from last night's storm. And while it will take some work, Pastor David Green said he feels as if they can still hold their worship service this upcoming Sunday morning. Initially, it looked like we just had a front entrance door that had been blown off. We had one other guy who came over and was assessing the property. He walked around back and he saw the more extensive damage to the back of the building there. And obviously we're not happy this happened, but we are encouraged that this was kind of the extent of the damage. We can fix this and thankfully no one was injured. Thankfully, we actually have an architect in house. So he came by a little while ago and assessed and saw that there was no signs of water damage or structural damage at at this time. So we're riding on that and hoping that proves to be true. We've got insurance and a contractor coming out to do further assessments here in just a little bit. Proud of our leadership team. I mean, they've been on this since early morning and they just gravitated toward the issue. And what I'm learning about Madison Hills is that we have a committed group that can meet a, meet a challenge head on. So great group of people. And right now we're just waiting on the insurance and that contractor to come out and see what we need to do from there. Initially, we thought maybe we couldn't hold services this Sunday, but it looks like we're going to be able to have a go ahead and continue meeting here Sunday. While insurance companies, roofers, and construction companies prepare for a busy few weeks, consumers need to be careful about how you handle these situations. Although it may not be quick, you need to make sure you work with the insurance company throughout the entire process so that whatever is done to your home is done the right way. Reporting for WBON-TV Channel 9, I'm Michael Watkins. Thanks, Michael. Remember, if you received substantial damage from last night's storms, the Madison County Emergency Management has established a telephone line for you to report. 
Uh, it's 859-624-4787. We'll leave that up there for you for just a second. Again, 624-4787. One of the biggest messages we received from viewers uh, were that Madison Countyans report concerned that their new FM alert emergency notification radios did not alert them of the impending severe weather, nor did the emergency sirens activate last night. Madison County Emergency Management is investigating the failure of those radios that were part of the federally funded program where homes, businesses in the county received alert FM radios earlier this year. However, many residents report not receiving any alerts on Sunday night that severe weather was heading this way. The National Weather Service is responsible for issuing warnings and activating the alert FM units, but that did not occur on that night. Emergency officials are collaborating with the NWS to determine the cause of the malfunction. Updates will be provided as more information uh, becomes available. Many homes and businesses still remained without power earlier today. Many local restaurants could not serve lunch as they were still in the dark, including Logan's, Olive Garden, the Golden Corral, and others. If you've received any damage from the storms last night, Madison County Emergency Management reminds you that that telephone number to report that damage is 624-4787. Well, Kentucky has secured nearly $1.1 billion in federal grant money, the largest ever investment in high-speed Internet in the state's history. The funding will connect every Kentucky and Kentucky into affordable, reliable, high-speed Internet. The grant is part of the $42.45 billion broadband equity access and deployment program aimed at expanding Internet networks in underserved areas. Kentucky has over 258,000 unserved location, locations. The Office of Broadband Development will distribute the funds through a competitive grant process. Governor Bashir has made high-speed Internet expansion a priority with previous investments of $203 million and $206 million previously. The governor conducted a listening tour and encourages residents to participate in the broadband speed test and affordable connectivity program. This investment will boost Kentucky's economy and improve connectivity for all. With that, we're going to take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. We've got lots more weather-related news. And, of course, we've got the weather coming up. We've got uh, Sam Ryan in the Weather Center to give us our forecast for the week. All that's still coming up here live at 5. Hi, I'm Chris Lowry with Bluegrass Restoration and Construction. From simple service work to full paints, roofing, flooring, and everything in between, we're your one-stop shop for your home maintenance and remodeling needs. Our family has been serving the Richmond area for three generations, and we're proud to continue that today. You also voted us the best general contractor in Madison County in 2022. We thank you for that honor. Give us a call for all your construction needs at 859-353-1133. Here's the message from the Richmond Fire Department. Every three hours, someone in the U.S. dies in a home fire. The Richmond Fire Department reminds you that where you put your smoke alarms matters. Install working smoke alarms on each floor, in hallways, living areas, and bedrooms. Test your alarms regularly and replace them after 10 years. Practice these tips and help prepare for and keep your family safe in the event of a fire. At Fast Flow Plumbing, you aren't sending your money to Texas and Florida to the big corporate plumbing companies. We're local, and that allows us to invest in the latest technologies like Permaliner for no dig sewer replacements, which we warranty for 20 years. Fast Flow is the future of plumbing. Don't destroy your landscaping and finished basement because a plumber tells you he has to replace your sewer. Keep your home beautiful. Call a local pro at Fast Flow. I'm Michelle. And I'm Jennifer. And in the spring of 1992, Bishop's Small Engine Repair was born in our mom and dad's barn in Estill County. Then in the fall of 1992, we made the move to Madison County, where we are today. With the support of our family, customers, and community, 
we have continued to grow in the outdoor power industry. With a full line of products from Cupcadet, Grasshopper, Echo, and Shindawa, we can help you tackle your yard so you can enjoy it with your family. Bishop's Small Engine Repair, where our focus is our customer. Stop on in, 119 North Estill Avenue in Richmond. We can't wait to see ya. Davis and Powell Funeral Home in Berea. From our attention to detail, a diverse staff, and the best aftercare in the business, there's no better local choice to take care of your family in a difficult time than Davis and Powell. Call in to discuss pre-planning and preparations so there'll be no additional burden on your family. Davis and Powell Funeral Home in Berea. For additional information, check them out at davisandpowellfuneralhome.com. Davis and Powell Funeral Home, always going the extra mile. The City of Richmond Stormwater Management Program works to protect our waterways from pollution and to help citizens with stormwater runoff and flooding. Stormwater is the rain and snow that runs off rooftops, roads, sidewalks, and other surfaces that cannot absorb water, which affects water quality. The City of Richmond Stormwater Management Program is dedicated to helping its citizens understand what stormwater is and its impacts on our watersheds and waterways. For more info, visit buildrichmondky.com and click on the the stormwater tab. Welcome back to Live at 5 on WBON TV Channel 9. That were some just crazy storms that moved across the system last night. As we mentioned, lots of people still without power and lots of damages to structures and personal property. We've got meteorologist Sam, De Sam Ryan with all the details for last night and some uh, forecasts for the rest of the week. Thanks, Gretelyn. Lots of hail damage and wind reports. Remember, this is from your Bluegrass Restoration and Construction Weather Center. We need them right now. As we look at all this hail damage, uh, take a look at all the, the holes dotted around the houses. It almost looks like a flock of woodpeckers came by. And there it is, just speckled and just shredded some of the homes around the area. So here's a look. We have 2.75 inches. Valley View, so this is uh, 2.75 is baseball size hail, baseball to tennis ball size hail, 2.5 inches is tennis ball, and we get into one and a half inches, so we've got large hail around the region, and then we had wind gusts, 70 mile per hour wind gusts right in downtown here. So looking at uh, the image out the door for our Monday, things have quieted down, and we'll have a slight chance of an isolated pop-up shower storm this afternoon. No organized severe weather, that's good news. Same thing for the day tomorrow with a warming trend and an active end of the week. So we have ridging building, upper low though, still under the influence here as we head through the evening, couple spotty showers. That's up to the northeast. Ridging starts to build in from the west. Still a chance of an afternoon pop-up storm into Tuesday and Tuesday night. And then we have the warm-up taking place. That ridge begins to break down, allowing a much more active pattern to finish off the weekend into the weekend. So we could have some severe weather with that. We'll keep an eye on it, of course. 80 degrees for a daytime high here Tuesday afternoon. Nice and pleasant. We'll be in those low 80s as that ridging starts to build in. We'll see temperatures warming up a couple more degrees Wednesday. Chance of those storms as early as late Thursday. High of 86. And we're in the 90s. Again, much more active pattern. We'll have to watch out for more hail and wind producers as we head into the weekend. Thanks, Sam. And for weather all the time, you can find it on Channel 9 online and the WBON TV Facebook page. Well, the Climax Volunteer Fire Department held their second annual car show over the weekend. The annual event raises money for the Volunteer Fire Department and features awards for Best Rat Rod, Best Jeep, Best GM, and Ford, Best Mopar, even Best Motorcycle, among others. Lots of folks turned out for the event and took advantage of the good weather Saturday in Mount Vernon, including the very popular staff of the Draw Western Theater. If you really like those guys and remind you, you can tune in for great classic Western movies every Saturday night at 8 o'clock right here on Channel 9, hosted by the Draw Western Theater. And don't forget, we are going to have an interview with the creator of that uh, car show right here on Live at 5 tomorrow. Make sure you mark your calendars for for that. It's going to be a great interview. Well, we've all seen Jeeps on the road, but Clay City residents saw hundreds of them Sunday. 
The reason? Well, an event sponsored by the Powell County Tourism saw an official Guinness World Record attempt the largest Jeep parade. WBON TV spoke with one of the participants of the event to get their perspective on that very large gathering. It's not unusual to see a Jeep on the highway, but hundreds of Jeeps? That was the scene in Powell County on Sunday as Jeep owners from all across the state made the trip to Hollywood Park in Clay City. They weren't the only visitors the town saw, as officials from Guinness World Records were also present. Event organizers had made the attempt at breaking the record for largest parade of Jeeps. It was just, honestly, it was a pretty cool experience. We're, my husband and I are pretty new to the Jeep world, so that was our first event where we just saw so many Jeeps, I mean, everywhere. Like, it was at Kentucky Dragway, where they do the races in Clay City, and they were just parked everywhere, decorated. We just got to walk around, look at them, I mean, meet such Cool people. Michelle Blackburn was a participant in the event and she tells WBON that the atmosphere there was fun and lighthearted. Kentucky 11 and Kentucky 15 were shut down from 4 to 6 p.m. to allow the parade passage through Clay City. Of course with that number of Jeeps there there's bound to be some unique vehicles rolling down the street. There were lots of patriotic ones of course, lots of veterans, um, just different color ones, I mean all colors but a lot of them were patriotic, of course, decorated for Fourth of July. The lady parked right behind us had pink flamingos all over it. We even saw a little kid in his little Power Wheels Jeep. According to Guinness World Records, the largest parade of Jeeps took place in Butler, Pennsylvania, where 2,420 of the popular SUVs roamed the downtown area. Although the Powell County event fell short this time, there's already enthusiasm towards attempting it again in the future. Reporting for WBON Channel 9, I'm Gage Hill. That's a great story there. Well, Corbin Tourism recently announced that Scully's, a restaurant in Corbin, will be competing in the World Food Championships in Dallas. Scully's received a golden ticket, which grants them er entry into the competition taking place in November. The World Food Championships is a renowned culinary competition that features various categories, including barbecue, cocktails, vegetarian dishes, desserts, burgers, and lots more. The championships have been held since 2012 and have played a role in launching the careers of numerous chefs who have gone on to achieve fame in the world of food. In 2021, the World Food Championship attracted over 1,500 cooks from 42 states and about six countries, all vying for the title of best cooks and artisans from around the world. Congratulations to Scully's and we wish them luck in that competition. Well, with that, we're gonna take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. We've got Dawson Rule. He is up next with sports. How do you protect your family during a disaster? Have a plan of action for tornadoes, floods, earthquakes, and for an incident at the Bluegrass Army Depot. Know what you will do and how you will contact each other. Having a plan helps to keep you calm and not panic. Visit EstelCountyEMA.com to get started today. Plan today for a safer tomorrow. marble and quartz for any surface. Make a lifetime commitment you won't regret. Did you know Markham and Wallace Hospital offers speech therapy for both adults and pediatrics? Why travel north when you can get the care you need right here in Irvine? Adult speech therapy focuses on the assessment and treatment of speech, language, thinking, and swallowing problems. Pediatric speech helps children communicate effectively by assisting with the improvement of their verbal and nonverbal language skills. For more info about the speech therapy department, call 606-723-8235 at Mercy Health Markham and Wallace Hospital. 
Hey, Madison County. Did you know Berea Ace Hardware is more than just a hardware store? Berea Ace Hardware carries the top brands like Skag, Echo, Steel, Spartan, Toro, Bintelli e-bikes, Wolf Brand scooters, Trailmaster go-karts, and Red Cat Racing RC cars. Check us out at BereaAce.com. We sell fun at Berea Ace. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. It's the common thread that ties us together, making life better for everyone. At CVNB, that means better banking, better accounts and lending, better experiences, better schools and better communities. Better. It's what ties us together. CVNB. Bank better. If you love local sports, you'll love the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show. Join your hosts, Samantha Burford and Michael Watkins, as they break down, recap, and preview sports news in our area. Each Monday night from 6 to 7 on WBON-TV Channel 9 and on Y92.5, V99.3, and CBS Sports Radio 1035. The Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show is also brought to you by the Richmond Raceway, Bluegrass Restoration and Construction, the Law Office of Patrick O'Neill, Nuevo Vallarta, and Bishop's Small Engine Repair. Welcome back to Live at 5 Sports. Today will feature commitments and an update on our old friends at the Richmond Heat. Here's Dawson Roll with sports. In the sports world, there were some big happenings this weekend that need some spotlight. First, let's start with local commitments. Jackson Brown from Model Baseball committed to play in his future games at Midway University. Jackson had a great career at Model and will now be one of many future Patriots to tear it up at the next level. I'm sure Jackson will be getting after it in the books, too. Avery Rigney from Madison Central's volleyball team committed to Kent State University for her future volleyball and academic career. Avery is gearing up for her senior year at Central, where she'll be a big team leader in the fall. Big shout out to these local athletes on their commitment days. You both will do great things. Now it's time for me to brag a little bit on my team. Well, I consider my team. The Richmond Heat girls traveled down to Tennessee for the Battle in the Borough this past weekend. The Heat 2024 team finished 3-0 in pool play. I also got a chance to tune into the 2025 Heat game on Saturday. That game, the 2025 girls beat down TC Hoops and looked great. The Richmond Heat are a great local basketball organization that promotes local hoop stars. I'll be following this team more throughout the summer. And next week, I'll be going to the Run for the Roses tournament with the team in Louisville for one day so I can get a chance to see in person these girls play in one of the biggest high school basketball tournaments in the entire world. Now, the Reds' 12-game win streak ended on Saturday to the Braves, one of the MLB's best teams. The Reds now begin a new series tonight with the Baltimore Orioles on the road. This is a big series for them, so your local Reds report will be covered by me now, a little bit more seriously now that the team is a serious contender and also because it's dead period. Tonight, the sports panel is back. At the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show, Michael Samantha and myself will be interviewing local sports stars, including some more EKU football players and another special EKU athlete. All that and more great local sports talk tonight from 6 to 7. That'll be all for sports on this Monday. Tune in all week for new sports updates and great local sports stories. Because this is Dawson Rule with the best sports coverage in Madison County. Thanks, Dawson, for that sports update. And don't forget, you can see Dawson tonight along with Michael and Samantha. He's going to be on the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show. We'll have sports guests and lots of sports talk. That, of course, is right here on Channel 9 at 6 o'clock make sure that you mark your calendars and your clocks for that. We're going to take another quick break. Don't go anywhere. Lots more news coming up right here live at 5. WBON TV 9 is proud to be your source for local news, local weather, and local sports. At WBON TV 9, we pride ourselves on being the local leader when something happens in our area. Channel 9 reaches nearly 900,000 people with our over the air coverage. WBON TV 9 is also the number one source you turn to locally for news on Facebook and WBONTV.com. Now you can enjoy all the local news, weather, and sports each weekday afternoon. Join us each weekday from 5 to 5.30 for the Live at 5 newscast. It's streaming on the WBON TV Facebook page, YouTube channel, Roku channel, and our live player on WBONTV.com. And of course, on Richmond's first TV channel, available on Spectrum Channel 712, 
Urban Community Television, PRTC Cable, and Channel 9.1 Over the Air. WBON-TV, where every local story starts here. At Jones Family and Cosmetic Dentistry, we value our patient relationships, making it our priority to deliver the gentle, compassionate care that you deserve from a dentist. We offer patients single-visit restoration on crowns, bridges, inlays, onlays, and veneers with Cirac. Jones Family and Cosmetic Dentistry is equipped to handle all your dental needs, from implants, teeth whitening, root canal therapy, and more. For your next dental appointment and for more details on lip filler and disport specials, call Jones Family and Cosmetic Dentistry at 859 985 0201. Did I ever tell you about the time I zipped right past that dang Sasquatch? I don't think so. Yes, sir, I don't know how they ever got away if it wasn't for this brand new side by side I got at Gateway Circles. In Mount Sterling? Yes, sir, they set me up with something that left old Sasquatch sneezing in my dust. <laughs> Jimbo! Lord, I hear him coming back now. That ain't no Sasquatch. That's mama. Get a great deal on Sasquatch eluders today. Gateway Cycles, Mount Sterling. Since opening in 1972, Citizens Guarantee Bank has been there to help our customers enhance their lives and achieve their dreams. With seven locations across Central and Eastern Kentucky today, we are celebrating 50 years of being there for the communities we call home. Citizens Guarantee Bank is now CG Bank. New name, same commitment to being there for our neighbors. CG Bank, we've been there for that. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. At WBON TV 9, you can count on our weather team to keep you up to date with all the latest developments, watches, and warnings. We're here for you night and day, 24 7, no matter what the weather brings. WBON TV 9 and our media partner 100.7, the Coyote, are dedicated to you. That's why we say when the weather turns extraordinary, so does our coverage. Get your forecast each weekday during the Live at 5 newscast on WBON TV 9 where every local story starts here. Welcome back to Live at 5 on WBON TV Channel 9, where every local story starts here. Well, a, a local family continues to try to find their father after he mysteriously disappeared over a week ago. Josh Woodhams has not been seen by his wife or children since Saturday, June 17th. He was in the Polo Club Boulevard, Todd's Road area of Lexington the last time that he was seen. Cell phone data indicates he was within a three mile radius of I-75 at exit 104 in Lexington at around 2.30 a.m. Sunday morning. At 3 a.m., 3 a.m., he was in a three-mile radius of the Clays Ferry Bridge. What makes the story an even bigger mystery is Josh Woodhams is thought to have left home on an orange mongoose motorbike, similar to the photo up on the screen. You want to take a look at that. He was wearing black Ohio T-shirt, uh, Ohio, Ohio State T-shirt, and black Nike basketball shorts. He also had a gray and black New Balance shoes. The family says it's possible that he may have been heading toward Knoxville or even Morristown, Tennessee, and they request that anyone that may have cameras on the roads around their homes in the vicinity that we mentioned, that's Todd's Road, Polo Club Boulevard, or maybe even down at uh, Clay's Ferry, that you can take a look at those and see if you have any evidence and let the authorities know know immediately that might be uh, useful in this investigation. The Lexington Police Department is investigating and if you can help you are asked to call them at 859-258-3600. Again that's 859-258-3600. If you get a chance go ahead and look on your security cameras and see if you have any information that you can provide. Well, motorists traveling on Kentucky 80 through Kentucky 461 in Pulaski County should anticipate delays this week due to overhead sign installation. The installation is part of the ongoing Kentucky 461 interchange project. On Wednesday, crews will be installing overhead truss signs in both the east and westbound directions. The process will require intermittent traffic stoppages as the signs are lifted and set in place. Traffic control will be conducted by flaggers. The work is scheduled to take place 10 
p.m. to 5 a.m. on Thursday the 29th. During this time, the speed limit in the work zone will be reduced to 45 miles per hour. Motorists are advised to exercise caution, slow down, eliminate distractions, and be mindful of the workers in those areas. These measures are put in place to ensure the safety of both the workers and the drivers passing through that construction zone. Thanks so much for joining us today live at 5. Don't forget about that sports show. That's coming up here at 6 o'clock. Have a wonderful afternoon, and I will see you back here tomorrow live at 5.